praise the Lord. We're, uh, was it Wednesday night victory service tonight? And I thank you for joining us. If you're online today, well, you got to be online, of course. But thank you for joining us online. Uh, we're real thankful for you logging in. At this time, I, know, I want to uh, read from the book of Psalms as we go into the praise and worship portion of, of the service. The book of Psalms, and I'm going to read from the 83rd Psalm. Psalm 83. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up, thy, up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people, and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come, and let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent, they are confederate against thee. The tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites, of Moab and the Hagarines, Gebal and Ammon, and Amalek and the Philistines, with the inhabitants of Tyre. Asur also is joined with them. They have hope in the children of Lot, Selah. Do unto them as unto the Midianites, as to Sisera, as to Jabin, at the brook of Kisan, which perished at Endor. They became as dung for the earth. Make their nobles like like Oreb, excuse me, kind of a little trouble soon, and like Z, Z Eb, Z Eb. Looks like an H from here, but I think that's a B. <laughs> <laughs> Yea, all their princes as Ziba and as Zalmanah, who said, Let us make to ourselves the houses of God in possession. O my God, make them like a wheel, as the stubble before the wind, as the fire burneth a wood, and as the flame setteth the mountains on fire. So persecute them with thy tempest, and make them afraid with thy storm. Fill their faces with shame, and they, that they may seek thy name, O Lord. Let them be confounded and troubled forever. Yea, let them be put to shame and perish, that men may know that thou, whose name alone is Jehovah, art the Most High over all the earth. Amen. This night you believe that Jehovah, the Lord God is the most high over all the earth. Let us go before him right now. Lift up our hands, our voices, and most of all, our hearts to him. Thank you, Heavenly Father, Lord God, for your goodness and your mercy, Lord God, for who you are, Lord God, the most high and sovereign God. We praise you right now. We recognize you as the almighty, Lord God. We pray for your presence, your move, Lord God, in this service, Lord God. Touch each and every person. We ask this in the wonderful name of Jesus. As we proceed on with this service, there, uh, there will be a link in the comments as we go into the tithe and offering portion of the church service. We're thankful for what you give. Uh, right now, we'll go ahead and pray for the offering. Pastor, please ask the Lord's blessing, sir. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord Jesus, for this time of giving. Father, we ask that you would bless both the gift and the giver. According to their giving, we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thankful again for your giving. It is used for the going forth of the kingdom of God. It may seem like something odd that God requires money from his people, if you want to see it that way, to keep the work of God going but he does but then again he blesses you first actually he, he has to bless you first before you can give to him you know if, if you're if you've got loaded wallets right now and uh, you're not saved yeah, it's still a blessing yes it still belongs to God if he saves if God saves you he'll give you that giving heart and you'll put in the offering it's it's a blessing from God to give Praise the Lord. We'll go ahead and proceed to go right into the worship service. If you want to read along with me, you can, you can turn your Bibles to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4. The Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, 
And we'll begin to read at verse 35. That is the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, verse 35. And the Word of God reads as follows. And the same day when the even was come, he saith unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into, beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him, and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind. And said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? And for a text, We'll read chapter 5 of Mark. Chapter 5 of Mark. I'll be reading verse 2. Mark chapter 5 and verse 2. Easy to find because it's right after my Bible read. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. I'll read that one more time. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. And for a little while, I want to speak on the message titled, A Storm Before Meeting a Devil. A Storm Before Meeting a Devil. Pastor, you please ask sure. the Lord's blessings here on the service. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for the reading of your word. For the moving of the Holy Spirit already in the midst of us. Lord, we ask that you would, by your power, unction Reverend Serrano afresh. Make preaching easy for him. Let him be your mouthpiece to our ears tonight. And Lord, let us wholly give our attention to what the Spirit of God will have to say to us this evening. We ask all this in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. I know most people, if not all, have wondered, have asked out loud, maybe confronted a preacher in anger, and asked, why am I having all this trouble come upon me? Why is God treating me like this? Why is life coming up on me this way, preacher? Why is it? Why am I uh, meeting all these circumstances? And I'm a I'm a good fellow. I'm a good person. Why is it like that? And you, he may or may not. She may or she may not give you an answer that might satisfy you. That might get you to thinking. But lo and behold, a few hours later, could be a few days, a few years maybe, a few decades, and then you get bigger trouble. You run into a bigger set of problems. And you keep wondering, you start remembering, you start putting stuff together. You had this trouble back then, now it seems like you think, you're convinced, you know, maybe by the Spirit, bearing witness, you know that you conquered that problem. God has let you know that you conquered that problem. So now this bigger problem comes along. And you start asking questions again. I want to propose that the reason we could have a storm or storms before meeting 
a devil or devils is because we weren't strong in that first situation to proceed into that bigger one. You went into a storm, you're having troubles right now, you're in circumstances that you really want to get out of. You're like the disciples in that ship. You're running to God. And he's not, he's draw, uh, uh, drooling at the mouth. He's fast asleep. Um, it seems like he, like, and you're doing all you can to get his attention. And he's still asleep. And you're wondering. First of all, why am I, why am I long for the ride? And then the master, he seems that he doesn't care. I want to propose that a lot of us have been getting ready mm -hmm. for a bigger trouble coming up ahead. Mm -hmm. And we will be ready. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If we do what God tells us to do, if we pass that first test, mm -hmm. all right. mm -hmm. you will be ready. Mm -hmm. that, and I, I want to make reference to a, a time when I was, I was doing a little bit of boxing and in the military and when I had joined the team I didn't know what was going on. I, I was I had no experience at all and you know guys got we got to show how how tough we are so we go take up a sport whatever whatever we're good at and uh, and I wasn't good at that sport when I started I was not it I was <laughs> I was putting a lot of time on my back and I don't mean by doing sit-ups I, I did a lot of time on my back because I get I kept being put down by those people I was sparring with. It's like I, I couldn't last long in the ring with them. They were so experienced and so good. My movements were so awkward. No grace to them. I had no strategy. I had uh, uh, muscle strength also. Muscle strength and coordination comes into play in a lot of sports. And I had very little to none of it. So I spent a lot of time on my back because I kept getting knocked out. Mm -hmm. I kept getting knocked out. But each time I landed on my back, each time I took a right hook to the chin, each time I, my opponent was trying to lay me out, I was learning something. And there was people in, the, in my periphery that were uh, also looking at me. They gave me advice later on. And as time progressed, I noticed that the reason I was getting knocked down so much is because I had a terrible stance, first of all. I had a terrible stance. All right. A lot of us... When we fight spiritually, we don't know how to stand or what to stand on. All right. We don't know what to stand on. Our arguments, mm -hmm. our defenses, they don't have a leg to stand on. Mm -hmm. You got you to gotta find out what you're standing on. Now, if you're the kind of person that will just go from one foundation to another, to another, to another, just because you're afraid of losing. You're going to be doing that for a very long time. All right. Until you find the right foundation. You might get put down on your back a few times. But then you find your legs. And you find your legs. And you find that life. That the devil, whatever's tossed at you, is not going to be enough to put you down. The storm. A storm before meeting the devil. You got one trouble. You're winning. If you're going to keep on living, your best bet is you're going to find more trouble, mm -hmm. bigger trouble. Are you the person, are we the people who are going to be recruited, uh, for lack of a better word, to go ahead and confront the devil? Mm -hmm. At the very mention of, of Satan, at the very mention that we're our, uh, going to the other side, just like this scene is depicting. Mm -hmm. Just at the very mention, and, and it's funny that he didn't, that when Jesus got in the boat, he didn't, he just said, let's go to the other side. Mm -hmm. 
They didn't know they were going to meet a devil. Mm. How would we have reacted if we were in that ship? The storm was, was enough. The storm was scary enough. How many of us would have gotten out the boat before it launched? Mm -hmm. If Jesus had said, we're going we're gonna to go through a bad storm, and then once it calms down, and we land on the other side, we're going to meet a devil. How many of, many of us would have gotten off before it launched? Mm. A storm before a devil. Mm -hmm. When they got on the other side, Jesus gets out of the boat. I guess a depiction of an invading army. That gives a picture, a scene of an invading army landing on the coast of its enemies. Holiness is invasive. Mm. Righteousness is invasive. Right. All these things that are godly, they are invasive to the natural man and to the natural woman. If we lean on the things of this world and we have not God in our lives, I was going to say something else, but you know what? It's, it's best to just let God invade. It's best to just let God invade with His holiness, His righteousness, His salvation. Holiness is invasive. Doing the right thing doesn't come naturally to us. Mm -hmm. That's right. We use it, and we do right, is because we want to look better than the other person. Mm -hmm. When we start arguing with each other about who's right, to, for some, somehow, some way, we have morals all of a sudden. We have standards all of a sudden when we want to win an argument. We have, we have something supposedly to stand on when we want to win uh, uh, some argument with somebody. The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. It may seem foreign to us. The governments of this world, they have laws. They have rulers. Mm -hmm. They have governors, policies, armies. They have a culture. And in some cases, different cultures or subcultures. If you pick out any country, if you do enough, in, enough research, you'll find out how people conduct themselves. Mm -hmm. How uh, uh, old men approach each other, how they greet each other on the street. What do you wear? Uh, what kind of gifts do you bring when you're invited to a wedding, when you're invited to a birthday party? Well, how is it that you behave? How is it that you dress? How is it that you conduct yourself? Mm -hmm. And most of all, are you the kind of person that anybody wants to fellowship with, first of all? Are you even somebody that people want to have around? Mm. Are you even on, on the wedding list when somebody's daughter is getting married? Mm. Do people think of you when they want somebody important to be invited? Do they think of you when uh, this is the, uh, the oldest son is going to graduate from law school on his way to making big money and they're going to have a celebration, they're going to have a, uh, some celebration after his graduation? Are you one of the people that pops up in their mind and says, I want them to celebrate with me? Mm -hmm. Are they the type of person that I want to so you can come and pat me on my back because they mean something to me. The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven has its own culture. Yes. Has yeah. rules. Yes. Has a person in charge. He conducts himself in what we think are stringent ways but he doesn't deviate from them. 
So when he comes to earth, when Jesus is sent to earth, it doesn't matter that he came to an empire. It doesn't matter now that he's invading a republic. It won't matter a few years from now if it's a socialist government. It doesn't matter if he goes uh, to the other side of the world and he invades uh, some kind of uh, 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 a country that is run by a tyrant. It doesn't matter to him. It doesn't matter. because You know why? Because he's invading that government, so to speak. He's introducing his culture to some to another culture. He's in, introducing one way of doing things, the holiness way. He's introducing holiness to another group of people. Are you going to let God come into your life? No matter what. Are you going to set aside your culture? Right. Are you going to set aside how you think? Now, Jesus was born a Jew. And his disciples were Jews. Mm -hmm. but he didn't. He, I didn't matter. He said, you do it the kingdom way. You do it the kingdom way. And he showed them something. Brought him to that storm to go to the other side to meet a devil. So that they would know they had to see. They had to see that the invader was the great God. Mm -hmm. And that those who were being invaded recognized that invader. Those devils recognized. That holy invader. They ran to him. They worshipped him. But it was the people there. It was the people that didn't recognize him. They actually kept kicking him out. Once they saw everything that Jesus did. I guess that was the bad thing about them not seeing the storm. They weren't in the storm. They were comfortable with the devil as long as he stayed over there by the tombs. They were fine with that. Their culture, in their culture, they were, they were fine with that. And they told God, get out of here, man. We don't want you around here. We don't want you around here. Mm -hmm. You know, I, with the way things are going, some people may ask, are you proud to be Latino? Well, my answer to that is, I had nothing to do with it. How can I be proud of something that I had nothing to do with? I could have been born any race, any gender of two, <laughs> any one of two genders, to any, any family, to any class of citizen. I had nothing to do with that. If I had something to do with the way I was born, I'd be a few inches taller, I'd have a full head of hair, a lot of money, maybe a smaller head, <laughs> shaped in a certain way, with bulging biceps, no, not too big. <laughs> not too big, because I've seen this, like, nah, okay, you, you went overboard, man. <laughs> Lean, mean, with a lot of green. Oh, Lord. <laughs> but I had nothing to do with that. Now, some of, the things, some of those things I can't do about. It. I'm not proud of being a Latino. <laughs> I'm not proud. I had nothing to do with it. I had nothing to do with it. I can't be proud of something I... I <laughs> it, that's, uh, that's odd to me. It's, it's just so odd. Go ahead. It's freaky. It's weird. <laughs> Go ahead, Rick. It, it really is. 
I'm proud of being such and such a race. What did you have to do with it? God made you the way you are. God made you the way you are. He's pleased with what he, he made with his hands. He is pleased. If you're black, he's pleased. Mm -hmm. If you're white, right. he's pleased. Amen. If you're Chinese, he's pleased. You had nothing to do with it. So stop being proud about it. <laughs> A storm for me and the devil. There's so many things that we have to encounter in our life. A lot of times we want to proceed past the storm, all that, and have a victory set up for us. All right. And a lot of times we send other people to win it so that when we show up, it looks like we did it. When we had nothing to do with it. All right. We want to tally up wins. And we never put on a set of gloves, spiritually speaking. Mm -hmm. We think we're holy because we're good people. I'm not proud of being holy. Mm. I had nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. I'm not proud of being saved. Mm. I had nothing to do with it. Mm. I'm, not, I'm not proud of the eternal life. I've been given. I had nothing to do with it. Mm. Who's my God? Can it? How about y'all try saying that my God did that? My God did that. You get a winning lottery ticket. You want to give him the credit, but something goes wrong. A storm comes your way. You don't want to give him credit when he's trying to make you strong. Mm. All right. It's putting you on the. Under the weight bench, pick it up. Get stronger. So I got something for you to do. Do one more rep. We're going to see a double. We're mm -hmm. going to see a bigger challenge. We're going to see a bigger challenge, and God is getting us ready. I'm not making any predictions. I'm not making any, um, I'm not prophesying. But I've had enough troubles in my life. There's people around me who've had troubles in their life. I got coworkers who've had troubles and still have troubles. We all have troubles in our life. And we tend to settle on the present problem. But when you get to God, when you pray, and you just and we just shut our mouths. Not telling God, yes, we can pray, please deliver us. But I'm gonna dare everybody, every now and again, every now and again, just as an exercise, just keep just keep quiet. And and just let God do what he's going to do. Could just maybe, just maybe, just maybe, he's going to put you on the back one more time so you can get up and you'll be ready for the next fight. Storm, get past the storm and go meet a devil. And it's not going to stop there. The devil's going down. The devil is going down. Just to finish that that picture I was painting about the my time in boxing is this fella. Every time I sparred with him, he put me on my back. But as time progressed, I was standing my ground. And the last time I got in the ring with him, while I was sparring with him. One of my coaches said, he stopped us and he, he got up close to me. He, he gave me a few, cause he, he was seeing what was going on. He said, hey, uh, every time you do this particular move, he counters and he rocks you. 
He said, oh, this is what I want you to do. Do the exact same thing. He's going to counter. And this is what he said. He's going to hit you. He is going to hit you, just like he had been doing. But when he does that, I want you to come through with this other move. Okay, okay, go. Okay. <laughs> and sure enough, I got through the storm. Got to the, got through the storm to get to the other side to meet the devil. I'm not calling him a devil, but I'm just trying to make a correlation. And we got in there, made the same stupid move. He countered and he rocked me. He rocked me. And he wasn't expecting me to counter back. And I remember I gave him one of the meanest left hooks. That dude went from guard. When I hit him, he was like, and he walked off. He walked off to the point where the coach had to walk walk towards him. Had to and says, Are you alright? Are you alright? Storm to devil, and it's not to not to lose with the devil. Alright. It's not to lose with the devil. Amen. To meet the devil, there may be some more. Who knows? But we're in it to win it. Amen. In it to win it because we come as representatives of the kingdom of God. We have a different culture with the holiness of the Lord yes. in us and we are supposed to conduct ourselves in that way. Amen. Glory be to God. Let us bow our heads right now as we dismiss in prayer. Thank you, Heavenly Father, Lord God, for your goodness and your mercy, Lord God. Thank you for the strength that you give, the salvation you give, the gift of the Holy Spirit, Lord God, that is for Jesus to give, Lord God. We're thankful, Lord God, for the changes that you make in people's life by your presence, your work, and your might, Lord God. We'll be careful to give you the glory and the honor, Lord God, that is all yours forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you for each and every person that has joined us today. I hope this was a blessing. Remember that God is for you, that if you're exercising, it's just to get stronger. And we'll be here Sunday morning at 11. Pastor should be, I think we'll be preaching at 11 in the morning. See you all then. God bless.